Now, I know it is a couple weeks past, but we need to talk about the final episode of The Acolyte. I'm not going to waste too much of your guys' time. I want to jump right into my review of episode 8, The Acolyte Finale, right now. So, going into the 8th and final episode of The Acolyte, I was really scared. Episode 7 really didn't do much for me. Episodes 5, 6, even 4, I think kind of began the steady decline for my interest in the show. I'm not going to talk too much about that as I've kind of hammered that point home in my past couple of videos regarding the show. So if you really want to know how I feel about that, go check out the episode 4, 5, 6, 7 reviews and you'll kind of see how my enjoyment of the show took a little bit of a downward spiral as the show continued on. So we were sitting at episode 7, the penultimate episode, and it was another flashback episode that I really think we did not need. I think this perspective, all while being kind of cool seeing it from a different viewpoint, could have just been a part of episode 3, which was the other point of view of the, you know, witch massacre, crazy cuckoo bonker, what's happening scene you know 16 years ago why everything is happening today and i was just sitting there thinking to myself how does this end how do they wrap all of this up in one more probably 30 minute episode well they gave us a treat with a 40 minute episode you know woohoo but they really had me scared that it was just going to be another oh find out next season which in some parts yes there are a lot of unanswered questions but it wrapped up a lot better than I thought. And that is kind of where I'm going to take the majority of this review, is that they kind of proved me wrong with how this series ended, or at least this season, because it does sound like more likely than not, we are going to be getting a season two of The Acolyte. Now, when I say they wrote me back in, I just mean they kind of exceeded my expectations, which my expectations were very low. So take that with a grain of salt when I say that. They did a good job at wrapping up why certain things were happening, why certain characters acted how they do, kind of fully put a bow on that Osha, May, Soul, Witch's backstory, and got our final confrontation between, you know, the villain and the quote-unquote good guys, which is really all I needed. That was the bare minimum they needed to do to keep me satisfied and not screw this up, and they did it, and they did a little bit more. I'm going to get into what I liked about the episode outside of them exceeding my very low expectations, with the first one being the final confrontation lightsaber fight between Kymir, Sol, and I guess kind of Osha joined in there at the end, although she didn't fight with the saber. She got Sol's saber, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, killed him with a force choke, fulfilling what was supposed to be May's prophecy, and bleeding her... I guess her lightsaber now, to a red saber, which I thought was pretty cool to see in live action, although it didn't really follow what the comics kind of made bleeding a crystal out to be. It was still cool to see, and I enjoyed it, which I know is a pretty hot take. Go ahead and find me in the comments, but I liked it for the most part. I thought this final battle was sequenced really well. It was choreographed really well. I liked the kind of flying through the air style that a lot of people really griped about which i think is just pure rage bait but that's besides the point it was very well choreographed i just thought it was cool to watch i liked the callbacks to revenge of the sith when they were down going down the hallway hitting their blades against the walls and although it's not really how lightsabers work i thought the sparking and the smoke was cool added a little bit of intensity to the scene and it was just a nice visual and really just overall the thing i liked about this episode I think they did do the twin swap thing pretty well, as good as they could. I know it's overused, I know it's a trope, and I didn't really care for it, but it was cool to see Osha hop over to the dark side and have Mei kind of in this disarray, like, what is going on? I mean, that's exactly what I was thinking for most of this series, but, I mean, I'm not upset with this choice. Osha can go run off with Chimere, be a, be, you know, cute little Sith couple, and she can be the Sith that she was never meant to be, which I say it as if it's a joke, but I did kind of enjoy that sentiment that she is now basically a Sith because she is bearing the consequences of not just her actions and misdirection, but of 
everybody's. Now, I know there are a lot of holes in that, especially with the Jedi and how the Jedi act and cover things up in this series, but how that affects the twins and Osha specifically, I thought was cool and wrapped up really well and came full circle from the beginning of the series. Other than that, everything else was kind of just mad, so mm, that's good. Nothing really to write home about or put on record and go into with a deeper dive. Uh, some things I didn't like was just, man, why are the Jedi hiding this? Like, I, I don't get it. And then bringing Yoda into the fold. Yes, I'm, I was excited. It was cool to see Yoda. But where do they take this? Like, how do they continue to cover this up, especially with Yoda knowing? And the green Jedi lady, I believe, Venestra is her name, she was never my favorite character to begin with. She was very dislikable, but this episode hammered it home. If they were trying to make a Jedi that just nobody liked and will never buy an action figure for or anything, they did a good job because, man, every time she was on screen, I just rolled my eyes and it was wondering what was going to come out of her mouth next. If it wasn't her complaining and giving orders, it was her being a sly, like, sneaky person with this horrible attitude. Like, it's cool if you're like, mm, I'm gonna hide this from the Jedi, but she was just a B about it. Like, why, why did she have to have this tone and this attitude? It really took me out of it and was just annoying. I wanted so badly to like her because I thought she could have been a cool character, but wow, did they really hammer home the fact that, man, this is the least likable character I've probably ever seen in anything. That aside, another thing I didn't really care for about this episode and the end of the season is that there are a lot of glaring questions, especially regarding the Kayati Mundi situation. Like, this isn't really too big of an issue for me, you know, the whole Kayati Mundi was there, but it's along the same lines as Yoda is like, they didn't, like, they brought him in to have him there, but they didn't explain anything about him. Why is he there? What is his role in all of this? And maybe it'll be addressed in season two, but how does he go from this to the famous quote of the Sith have been extinct for a millennia? Does he get mind wiped like May did? Which I don't know if I agree with that either. Do the Jedi just get mind wiped after this? That's what I want to know. But that wasn't, that, that won't work either because Yoda has all these hundreds of years of wisdom and he can't be mind wiped. I just, that is just something that is stuck with me the whole time as soon as they introduced Kiati. I'm like, okay, this could be cool, but they gotta explain it. And they just don't. And he was such a minor character in this series that I don't even know if he'll play a role in a season two. So that is unfortunate and kind of makes me upset. But other than those specific dislikes, I mean, overall, the episode was just meh. It was probably one of my better liked episodes, which again, is not saying a whole lot. It's probably up there in my top three, but uh, the, my, the other top three contenders are the first two episodes, which was all set up and promised that got destroyed through the course of the season. And I mean, I'm never really one to talk like this or talk down on anything, but I don't know. I might need to give this show a rewatch, but overall, episode eight, the finale, did what it needed to do, but still left a lot of glaring questions for season two. And, you know, we're just going to have to ride through this and figure it out. What will Plagueis do in season two? What will Yoda do? Kiati return. Is Osha really going to become a big bad? I mean, we all know they have to die and make the sacrifice to end up where we are in the Skywalker saga timeline, but yeah. Uh, episode 8, I'll give it a generous 6.5 to 7 out of 10. Lot of issues, but the spectacle was able to kind of take me out of it. But that is all I have to say about episode 8 of the Acolyte the finale. I want to know what you guys had to say about this down in the comments below now. Did you like the episode? Why or why not? And what do you think we can see in a potential season 2? I'm looking forward to reading what you have to say, and I'm going to be responding to those comments as soon as I can over the next few days. Also, while you're at it, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.